Hey guys, welcome back. This is day number 82 of trading futures every day until they become profitable. So uh, the end of the week was pretty lackluster. I wasn't even sure I was going to trade today, but a lot of people said it was okay. So I was just like, yeah, sure, I'll trade. I didn't lose money today, so it could have been a lot worse. I took one break even. And then on the second trade I took, I got stopped out after taking a partial. I got stopped at a break even. So yeah, not too bad. But the thing is trading on trade of eight with my trading view chart on my right monitor is sometimes like way more complicated than it needs to be. And it's half because I'm not used to reacting quickly yet, totally. But also I can't see what my risk is when I enter a position on trade of eight. All I can see is where my stop loss is. So I'm just using the calculator that I made, a link in the description, to calculate how many contracts I need. And I'm trusting that it's working and stuff. But I know for a fact that I didn't risk enough on this trade today. I do have automatic brackets set up on trade of eight, but I, it must be messed up. I must not have set it up right because it had my stop loss like a mile, mile down. But anyways, I'll get into the trades now and uh, show you all the stuff that happened today. So first things first here, there was a completely valid trade that occurred at like 9.59 a.m. So 10.29 my time. I was eating breakfast because I woke up late this morning. I know, horrible excuse, and I'm not that bright for waking up that late because this would have been a banger trade. I gotta start going to sleep earlier because it's it's actually, I need to take this more seriously, 100%, but I'm just not tired in the night times, I don't know. Macro time, liquidity sweep, Asia low, four hour low swept. We're delivering from a 15 minute fair value gap. We inverse the one minute fair value gap and there's equal highs above as a draw on liquidity, which didn't end up getting hit, but it would have been a good trade regardless right here i was going to take this trade but like i said here there was equal lows left this line down here so it's against my rules to trade against the equal lows even though they are pretty far away from the entry it's still right underneath the entry candle so wasn't taking this although it would have been a break even anyway it came down afterwards and then went up to tp but it's whatever then I actually did take this trade. And like I said, it's confusing going back and forth between trade of eight and trading view because this was actually invalid because there's equal lows literally left right here. And I entered here and quickly got out for break even, but price came up down and then I think it moved around and come up to this top point and far beyond. So it would have ended up winning, but it was invalid. Swept liquidity delivering from a five minute fair value gap inverse the one minute fair value gap and there's equal highs above. And this here finally is the trade that I actually took at 11.39 a.m. We swept liquidity delivering from a 15 minute fair value gap, inverse a three minute fair value gap with equal highs above as a drawn liquidity. And when I see my setup, unless there's some glaring reason, which I won't get into because it's a little bit complicated in this video, but if there's a glaring reason why I should not get in the trade, for example, a fair value gap is right above that we're about to enter into, I would either have to go break even there or not take the trade at all. If I see my setup, I have to take it. That's just how it works. There's no reason for me not to take my setup. So that's what I did here. We swept liquidity delivering from a 15 minute fair value gap. We inverse a three minute fair value gap right here with equal highs above far up here as a draw on liquidity. They're way off to the left, but it's still a draw on liquidity. And I just mentioned how I didn't end up risking enough because it's a little bit confusing. So not sure how much I was risking, but then I mentioned that uh, I only like trading on top step X because it's actually the best platform, 100%. Look how close we got to taking off 75% of the position unfortunate but this was like 50 percent off at one to one pretty much and then break even maybe even a little bit more than one to one actually but yeah that was that trade final trade i want to show you here guys you can see the executions this is on my brother's account today he took this trade he was risking like 400 or 450 or something shorted here on the 32nd this is the 32nd that's why i didn't take this trade but it, it did look really good we swept liquidity delivering from a five and a 15 minute fair value gap this is the five here. We inverse the 30 second for value gap with equal lows below. It's equal lows on NQ. This is MNQ we're looking at. But here's the thing. Price came down here. And when he went to take half of his contracts off, as you can tell by the executions, he didn't buy 15 contracts. He sold 15 more contracts. So he was in a really heavy position. And then when price came up here, his new entry average price had is like here. So he was at the break even point. And because his risk was now too much, me and him were watching it. And we kind of just panic got out of this position so if he had stayed in it would have been over a rack 100 on his challenge but it was it was kind of funny so it's okay here if you guys just want to look i journaled my trade from today you can see commissions really screwed me over if not for commissions i would be break even on the week but commissions 
are equal to $171. So that's subtracted from this amount. So I'm actually down over 150 on the week because of commissions and stuff. Also, if I had risked correctly on Monday for this first trade, I would have made over 500 here. And if I didn't take at least this invalid loser here, I would be 750 on the week. And I'm only saying that to try to tell myself, okay, you made a couple stupid mistakes. Without those stupid mistakes, you would be up money instead of just break even. So it's not even that I'm down on the week because of those mistakes, I'm just break even. So you gotta stay positive and understand that okay, I know what I'm doing. I just have to keep doing it and execute better in the future. And yeah, when I was in that trade today, that final trade, I felt like basically no emotions because if I'm in a completely valid trade and I trust my strategy, it's kind of just nonsensical to be stressed out when I did everything right. I couldn't have done anything else to change the outcome. All I can do is execute and the outcomes will take care of themselves in the long run. So also guys, today I want to tell you I bought a 100k static challenge, which means it's dry down static. I bought it with elite trader funding or something because they're running a 90% off discount or something for Black Friday. So I got it for 1350 US. The rules make it kind of hard to pass, but I'm just going to use it for practicing my reaction time in the market and seeing valid setups. I'm going to basically, when I'm done trading my main account for the day with my regular rules, I'm going to hop on that account with like one or two micros, super low risk, and just take every valid trade that I see to try to get an idea of, okay, the win rate in the live market and get better, like I was saying. So just going to use that for that purpose. It's 20 Canadian dollars. It's like nothing. It's like the same price as a foot long sandwich at Subway. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today guys and that's it for this weekend hopefully you had a good time with your families yesterday if you're in the u.s and i'll see you on monday for day number 83 of trading futures every day until they become profitable thanks for watching guys